everybody, welcome back to Newegg TV. I'm Steve, and of course we are covering CES 2014, and this man probably doesn't need any introduction, but this is Tom from NVIDIA. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Steve. Thanks for coming by. Oh, thank you so much for having yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know we've got a lot of really cool things that NVIDIA's unveiled, and I want to talk to you about G-Sync, man. Bring I mean, it. it's going to be it's going to be changing gaming as you know it. Uh, so uh, this is my my first time actually ever seeing a real full time demo. I mean, we were at BlizzCon. I got a quick look at it. Yeah. Uh, but I really want to let everyone at, ha at their house know now that we have more information. Yeah. What's the deal with G-Sync? How are you guys making the magic happen? Okay. Well, G-Sync is a really simple technology to think about. Today, monitors have fixed refresh rates, but right. GPUs have variable refresh rates. So how do you get something that's running at say 45 frames per second in your game onto a monitor? that's running at 60 hertz. It doesn't make any sense, right? right? Well, the truth is today we have two bad solutions. One is called VSync on and the other is VSync off. With VSync on, what we're actually doing is we're replaying certain frames whenever the frame rate is too low. So you end up getting like the same frame shown twice. Mm -hmm. And that has a visual effect of stutter. That's exactly what stutter is. It's the lack of an update. Now the other bad solution is called VSync off. And instead of waiting for the refresh, what we'll do is update an image in the middle of a scan. So we'll start scanning from the top to the bottom, and then we'll update the image halfway, and that gives you that weird line. It's not caused by the monitor, it's caused by the GPU trying to synchronize to the monitor at a rate that doesn't match. Okay. What G-Sync does is it flips that all around, and instead of synchronizing the GPU to the monitor, we synchronize the monitor to the GPU. So whenever the frame is done in the GPU, nice. that's when the monitor draws it. It's that's a really fantastic. simple idea. Excellent. So yeah. then it doesn't really matter. You don't have to, to worry about dropping down. If you're at 45 frames a second, your system can't handle 60 in a particular game. Absolutely. It won't drop down to 30 to match up with the monitor. That's exactly right. Okay. And it'll it'll actually maintain uh, whatever frame rate the GPU is running around at. Now, of course, monitors are going to have a max frame rate okay. and they're going to have a minimum frame rate. But as long as your game is in that range, which you know most games should be, it's going to be a very, very seamlessly smooth experience. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So I know we have set up here. A, a, are these 4K? Tom? These are 4K. Oh. So. We're demoing here for the first time the fact that G-Sync, which is this monitor, works with 4K. Uh, this is just a, a technology demonstration. We've removed all of the hardware inside of this monitor and replaced it. You can see back here, this is actually a G-Sync module driving 4K. Wow. So this is acting like a single SST DP stream, and it's a single head 4K running at 60 hertz with G-Sync. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. I think 4K and G-Sync is going to be one of those amazing technologies because if you think about it, 4K has a really heavy load on the GPU. Absolutely. So it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to sustain rates higher than 60 all the time. So 4K is like the sweet spot for G-Sync. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so I know you have a side-by-side -side comparison, right? So we, we do. got uh, uh, another another 4K monitor, also from ASUS. Yep. And uh, what what is it that you're trying to do between these two? Okay. Well, we're trying to give people a sense of what G-Sync does, and it's probably very difficult to capture on a video camera. Yeah, you're not But able to see uh, it. on the left-hand side, we're showing we're running at about 40 frames a second, which most people think is a great experience. But if you look at this, as we pan across, you'll see the the timber kind of like wiggling that tearing, and it, right? the, all that tearing. But if you notice, it's still actually stuttering as well yeah. because VSync a lot of people think fixes stutter but really it just stutters differently in different parts of the screen oh. right so you're looking at actually this sort of vibrating image on the right hand side and hopefully you guys can see a little bit of this this is perfectly buttery smooth really even is. though the frame rate is only 40 frames a second so uh, we do so, some videos where we actually show side by sides of stuff like that but the way we're doing it is we're saying a 60 Hertz VSync signal is effectively the same experience at, as G sync at any rate. That's awesome. All right, yeah. so we've established that it's awesome. How do we get it? What, what's available? Okay, so there's really three ways to get G-Sync right okay. now. The first way is to go to NVIDIA.com okay. and buy a G-Sync DIY kit. They're available as of this Friday, and they're $199. I think they're available in the U.S. and Canada. So uh, the second way to get it is to go to uh, key system builders. There's several in the U.S. and I believe it's Scan in Europe that will allow uh, you to buy a retrofitted ASUS monitor. So it'll have all the kit already integrated into an existing monitor. So basically, if you're not comfortable doing the do-it-yourself, splitting yeah. open your ASUS monitor, or what, what monitors can currently be it's, upgraded? It's really just one monitor, okay. and it's a specific uh, 20, I think it's a 24, 27 inch. 27 inch uh, 10, 19 by 10 monitors the DIY kit. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. or is it a 24 inch? I think it's, you know? 24? Huh? Which one? The ASUS monitor that we do the DIY retrofit with. 
Yeah, it's 24 inch, uh, 19 by 10, 144 hertz. Okay, good. So it's a 3D vision monitor. That's that the is, one I have. I want to make sure that's yeah, the yeah, yeah. I, I don't upgraded. know the model number off the top of my head, but it's actually a really great monitor. Okay. Um, so you can get that retrofitted by different system builders, or you can buy the kit and do it yourself. Perfect. But the real way to get G-Sync is to buy a new monitor from one of our OEM partners. So okay. folks like ASUS have made a bunch of announcements here, yeah. BenQ, ViewSonic, um, and a bunch of others. So I'm very excited Excellent. because this whole wall is brand new uh, OEM versions of G-Sync that are coming and going to be available in Q2. That's awesome. Now, yeah. I just want to ask you one thing. Sure. Are there any caveats to installing it and, and using that upgraded kit on a current monitor? Yeah. Uh, well, G-Sync is for gaming. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to use your monitor for you know everyday office and you're not going to game, don't get the upgrade because right. G-Sync is really all about making gaming better. Now, gamers use graphics cards and they only have DP now. So our uh, module for G-Sync is DP 1.2 only, so you're not going to have HDMI. Okay. You're not going to have the ASUS OSD. Okay. You're not going to have on audio. On-screen display, guys. On so you won't be display. able to use that on there. Yeah, but you okay. will be able to use our minimal on-screen display, but all the controls for gamma and color are implemented in third-party software that you run on your PC. Okay. So you get all the functions that you normally expect with a gaming monitor, but the experience is dramatically better. Okay, and yeah. just one last thing. So sure. if the OSD is affected, I know I get a little crosshair on there, too, and a, and a timer with my monitor, yep, yep. would I still be able to do that after the upgrade kit? On the on the modified upgrade, you don't, because okay. we, we don't actually implement that in the DIY kit. Nice. But on the production okay. versions, uh, of course, you'll get the full OSD from all of our partners. Okay. So ASUS will very likely include the crosshair in their production version of G-Sync Monitor. So basically, if you want to keep that functionality, you definitely want to buy the new monitor. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Perfect, yeah. okay. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to add about G-Sync? Uh, well, I'm super excited about G-Sync. I think it's one of the first uh, times that we've really changed how displays work in a long time. Right. It's just the beginning for us. I mean, because now that we're starting to work more closely with the guts inside a monitor, right. there's a lot more that we can do. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, yeah. Tom, thank you so much for talking with yes, us Steve, today. Thanks for coming. Excellent. We got a lot more from NVIDIA's booth, so stay tuned. All right, guys. Now, we've moseyed on over to uh, a very special booth over here, but Nick is going to give a little bit of an explanation for that. So, yes, Nick, uh, what are we looking at here? So, you're at our new Tegra K1 uh, mobile processor booth area. We're showing a bunch of demos here, and Tegra K1 is our latest and greatest mobile processor that's coming out in the first half of this year in 32-bit format. We also have a 64-bit design that will be out in the second half of this year using awesome. our Denver architecture, <laughs> which is our, our own uh, ARM 64-bit architecture. We're an architecture cool. licensee, so there will be powerful cores, seven-way superscaler, really, really cool. Wow. But what we're showing here is the kind of uh, scenarios, the kinds of applications we're showing are very high-quality graphics, this is the first mobile processor that can run Unreal Engine 4. Unreal Engine 4 in, you know, sub five, five or six watt processors, pretty that's, amazing. That's okay. That's crazy. The quality of the graphics you just will not see anywhere else. OpenGL 4.4. Nice. Okay. Not ES 3.0, which uh, is today's sort of state of yeah. the uh, of the art. So we're going to see some pretty amazing game games coming into mobile. It'll be much easier for the developers to bring their games now from the PC space down to mobile. That's awesome, okay. yeah. Um, computational photography with 192, 192 graphics cores. Kepler-based, okay. right? Kepler-based. Nice. Okay, CUDA cores, as we'll call them, too. Okay. Um, and four Cortex-A15 uh, R3 processors in the 32-bit version wow. with a fifth uh, power saver core. Okay, that allows us to run, you know, for mobile, for applications that don't require that much, you know, horsepower right. or background updates and things like that. So it's Excellent. really going to be a rocking uh, uh, chip, and we're going to see it in a number of products this first half of the year. Excellent. Okay? And um, if you'd like, we can maybe zoom in here at, yeah, at this demo, which is an Unreal Four Engine demo of a living room. And I'm going to zoom around here and look around. This is near photorealistic looking, global illumination, high quality textures, lighting that just looks realistic. We're going to go zoom in here on this couch, for example, and look at look some of the textures. It may not look spectacular yet, but as you get closer, look the, at that. the cracks in the leather, the way that it, that it reflects, I mean, it's phenomenal. That, Out of a mobile device. A mobile like, device doing this kind of rendering is unheard of unheard of. Now we're going to go look at the floor as well. Let's just take a look at some of the wood grain. 
and the reflections. See the reflections in it's the floor, the light the, reflections. I following mean, the boards this, there. This is this is really really wow. going to bring amazing looking content to the mobile environment. Let's zoom back out, okay, and look at the whole living room, okay. So pretty cool. Yeah. Okay? No, that's spectacular. Yep, Excellent. So, so really excited. We're going to see a number of products. Like I said, we don't have. Um, we have demonstration products here. This is our Tegra Note design reference platform that has the K1 in it. So Tegra Note, this is in the market today, has wow. a Tegra 4. But this is showing the K1 in the same sort of form factor. And of course, we'll see wow. it in phones, uh, tablets. We'll see K1 in um, clamshells, all-in-ones. I mean, you can go right up the gamut. And certainly, we have the 64-bit architecture, same thing with Tegra K1 64-bit. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Um, Excellent. Okay. Well, Hope it Nick, helped. I know you guys also have a bit more to show us. Yes. Hang on a second. We're going to run right over to that next booth. Okay, guys, we've moved right along to the automotive section of NVIDIA's booth. And I'm here with David, who David has been explaining to me the amazing technology that the K1 processor has been actually been able to implement into mobile devices, in this particular case, a vehicle, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Excellent. Yeah, we're actually really excited about uh, the work that's ongoing in automotive. We truly believe that, uh, that the car is perhaps the, the largest and probably maybe most expensive mobile device that you will ever own. I completely agree. So with that, maybe let me show you kind of uh, some of the work that we're, we're doing uh, with K1 uh, in a vehicle and um, show you kind of the, the graphic uh, performance that you can come to expect uh, from your next generation vehicles. It's going to be crazy. That much horsepower in a vehicle, I mean, no pun intended, but <laughs> that much graphical horsepower in a vehicle, I, I want to see. What do we have here? Absolutely. So let me take you right in. So what we have here, um, this is a, a K1 uh, developer's tablet that essentially is running Android. And on top of that, we have a uh, uh, basically a configuration application um, that was created in a tool that we also provide that's called UI Composer. Okay. That tool then allows us to create um, and take 3D geometries and on those geometries then customize the look and feel of that actual surface. So we can apply either different colored materials, we can apply different materials in terms of you know, a metal, a porcelain, a plastic, and just give this the overall customized effect that you or I might really like to see in our vehicle. Wow. And what's really powerful about the way that K1's doing that is that we're, these are actually photo accurate um, materials. Um, so this is the same material like if you went and scanned like a piece of brushed aluminum or you scanned a porcelain or you scanned plastic. Yeah. This is a recreation of that in real time. I'm, I'm reminded of the shield unveil, how you guys actually had the demoed shield, you know, like a fully uh, CG shield on, yeah. on stage. That was awesome. But this is essentially your your own HUD, right, on your on your dashboard, and everything you're going to be using, all the instrument panels that you're going to need, and you're just essentially picking a material that would be lifelike, and then throwing it immediately up on there, and just have an immediate customization of whatever you want. Exactly. This is this is the idea that either you or I, as users of our vehicle, can mm -hmm. customize and personalize our vehicle the way that we like it or that this could be used as a tool for our OEM partners who are actually designing and styling the vehicles to produce presets and predefined ways for the look and feel that they want and essentially the juried look that they want their vehicle to really, really have. Basically, so, you know, Dodge, Ford, Chevy, they can all just differentiate with the same chip and the same technology and use that horsepower with their own software that they're exactly, developing. Exactly, exactly. Or wow. even better, from a, from a platform uh, perspective, there could be one platform that essentially for example, like a company like Chrysler could then take and differentiate vehicle brands very, very simply just by changing the look and feel. So the, the hardware fundamentally remains the same and we just change what's on top of it from a software perspective to give a different look and feel for the application. So much easier, right? I mean, there, I mean, you can't just sit here and sculpt everything out every single time someone wants to have a change. And there's obviously third parties that are physically making molding that's different. Here right. it's digital, so you can just change it as, as, on your whim. Right, exactly. Yeah. And what's really cool about this is that, you know, we are now producing photo accurate surfaces that, that rival what you can do from a mechanical perspective. Right. So arguably speaking, you get this customization effect, but then you're getting something that's luminous and that's has a quality that, that is as nice as, as those real materials that were handcrafted or, or crafted into those gauges that you've seen today. That's awesome. When I first heard about K1 being implemented in an automobile, first thing I thought was, oh cool, the navigation's finally not gonna be crappy. <laughs> I'll be able to move it and it won't stutter. It'll be great. But uh, but besides that, what else are you guys doing with K1 and vehicles right now? So one of the really beautiful parts about K1, of course, is that it's implementing this Kepler class GPU really for a mobile application. 
Um, this means now we have a, a level of, of horsepower uh, that we've never really had in a mobile device. Um, right. This means that we can then bring the same work that we're doing from a high performance computing perspective into a, a vehicle environment. Nice. That essentially will allow us to take that uh, discrete GPU and use it like a general purpose parallel processor. And the extension and the application for that is now that GPU will become an area where we can run driver assistance algorithms natively on it. Just simply as an application in parallel with the other really beautiful graphical work that we're doing on top of So you're of saving it. driver's assistant, driver assistance, but I'm, I'm seeing a video over here kind of implementing this idea, right? So why don't we just describe really quickly what we could see here and what you mean by driver assistance. Yeah, so, so driver assistance are, for example, like the forward-based vision applications that you see on a vehicle today. Those would be things like lane departure warning, traffic sign recognition, object detection, uh, tracking potentially of like vehicles that are in front of you. And it's not so much that you would necessarily have that running as a, as a visual loop, but that becomes a signal processing center that then is notifying other systems within the vehicle that those events and those things are going on. Wow. So you're using, you're using the GPU not purely for the graphic or the, or the visual processing, or, or the graphic capabilities, but right. for its visual processing capability. And obviously it's got so much parallel processing power that you can just do tons of stuff at the exact same time. And when you're seeing a person walk across through, you mentioned that earlier to me, when we were discussing it, could literally point out that person and say, hey, look out, there's a guy that's trying to jolt in front of you, or a kid drops a ball and rolls across the street. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it's this also idea that we're converging, you know, modules within the vehicle. So where you right now today in a vehicle, you have separate modules that are running the driver assistance functionalities. We're actually saying with the same K1 device, you could create a really beautiful HMI, a beautiful look and feel, and then on top of it, you know, run these uh, modalities of driver assistance um, on there in parallel. That's yep. fantastic. Just as an application. Well, hey, thank you so much for talking with us, David. We yeah, really absolutely. Appreciate you. Pleasure to talk with you. Yep. Thank you very much. And thank you guys also for watching. Don't forget to stay tuned for more of our CES coverage, and we'll see you soon.